Hello, good evening everybody. Happy International Women's Day. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's good to see Victoria, some familiar faces here and lots of new faces as well this evening. We've got a really good turnout. It would be great if you could type in the chat where you are in the world. We're really keen to know where people are zooming in from. And people are typing into the chat. So we've got people from all over. Quite a few people in America, Scotland, Manchester. Brilliant. So I've not introduced myself yet. I'm Victoria Foster. I'm the Associate Director of ISR, the Institute for Social Responsibility. And we've been running this Good Society Public Seminar Series for several years now. It's included a diverse range of topics from children's mental health to the economy, the church, and work with women seeking refuge and asylum. But this evening is a Good Society International Women's Day special. And I'm delighted to have Dr. Sarah Williamson here to talk about art activist Barbie. And you're in for a real treat this evening. I've known Sarah for a good few years now. She's senior lecturer in the School of Education and Professional Development at the University of Huddersfield. And we met a few years ago um, at a conference on arts-based methodologies. And I found her work on creative pedagogical strategies really inspiring. And I've managed to adapt quite a few of her ideas to use in my own teaching. Although I'm yet to bring Barbie to any of my lectures. In 2018, Sarah was one of six lecturers shortlisted from all UK universities for the prestigious Times Higher Education Most Innovative Teacher Award. So it's not just me who's found her work inspirational. Uh, it's been exciting to see how her work with art activist Barbie's taken off and become such a phenomenon. And many of you will be aware of art activist Barbie's Twitter account at Barbie Reports, which has many, many followers. And I'm sure some of you are here tonight. And the work has attracted national and international attention. It's been covered by The Guardian and the BBC. And Sarah and art activist Barbie have even been invited to Westminster to present there. The work has a strong academic base as well, and Sarah is a member of three international research teams which have received funding from pre prestigious Canadian grants. And she's published academic writing on Barbie as well as attracting the media following. So it's great to see a feminist activist academic doing work that really captures the imagination of the, a wide public, not just a specialist audience. So you'll see this evening why her work has become so popular. Um, what we'd like you to do is type any questions and comments into the chat as Sarah speaks and then she's going to talk for about 40-45 minutes and then I'll pose your questions to Sarah after she's finished speaking. So I will hand over now to Sarah. Thank you Victoria, thank you for that introduction. There, can everyone see my screen? Yes. yes. Right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. <clears throat> right. Um, Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for inviting me to do this lecture on, on, a, on a really special day as well, International Women's Day. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about good activism for social justice uh, in celebration of International Women's Day. And I'm going to be talking to you about our activist Barbie. And if you just look at the photograph on the left, this is it in a nutshell, really. There she is outside London's National Gallery pointing out, I mean, and it's, it's staggering what she's pointing out, the 2,300 works by men and 21 by women. Oh, I'm just trying to get my screen to move on in it. Oh, there we are, yes. Um, thank you everyone. So this is what I, I'm going to talk about uh, for the next 40 minutes. I'm going to look at good activism and art activism and uh, creative disruption. The power of the arts to activate critical awareness and, and consciousness. And our activist Barbie's work as a practice of challenge, but not just challenge, but also of possibility and hope. And this work, um, in fact, a lot of the work that I do uh, as an educator is inspired by my uh, wonderful mother. So I'm going to dedicate this talk to her. She died a couple of years ago and uh, she was like a, a tour de force, really. She was a really inspirational woman who her whole life, um, worked and volunteered um, to support women's rights. She marched for bread, not bombs. She made Christmas dinners for prisoners' wives in the 1950s. She went to Greenham Common. And in, in the years when I started to do this work, um, she was a huge supporter of, of, of this Barbie and she used to accompany me 
um, on some visits to galleries as well. And so why is this work important? Um, well, if we have to think about gender inequality, United Nations says unfinished business in every single country of the world. They don't say most countries, they say every single country of the world. Um, let's move down. You know, the powers that be are still predominantly male. Patriarchal patterns of gender oppression remain, remain more resilient than many of us suspected. There you can see our oh, Therese Barbie, she's, <laughs> she's in a library. She's uh, just giving action man a hand up there. Hmm. And why art? Well, the arts and aesthetic experience, they, they've got this potential to awaken us. I'm really interested in this idea of waking people up, see people, uh, but to see things maybe that you've not seen before or to see things in a different light or with a different perspective. I want you to have a look at this uh, outfit that our activist Barbie's wearing there because do you know what? My mother would have had a fit that I'd actually bought a carton of ready-made custard because <laughs> she would never have ever done that. So... Um, <laughs> she should have probably forgiven me. So we had this um, this carton of custard, and it said on the carton of custard, "Make it special, ready to serve." And I thought, well, do you know what? I could uh, I could wash this out and cut it up and make a cape. So there she is, uh, protesting in Tate Britain, saying, "Ladies, you know, be ready to serve the patriarchy. Make it special." And Jeanette Winterson says, "Art asks us to think differently, to see differently, to hear differently, and ultimately." to act differently. Um, so that's what I'm interested in, acting for a better world. And you can just use camouflage there as our activist Barbie. And why art galleries and museums? Well, if we just take, have a little look at this uh, photograph. This is a photograph in Manchester Art Gallery. This is just one corner of one room. So let's have a look. One, two, three, there's four women there. Um, more or less with nothing on, apart from the child. Um, and you can see our activist Barbie on, on the floor there. I mean, uh, the one on the on the far left, I think is really problematic. It's not just a woman in a state of undress, but actually that's a prepubescent girl. Um, and this is the kind of thing I go around pointing it out. And, uh, but, but the arts and culture can play an important role um, as an enabler and driver as well. So I'm interested in how we can harness the power of the arts. Why art galleries and museums? Well, they shape our identity without, without us even knowing, you know, that these um, amazing, gorgeous buildings that we go in, that we love, they've got the great big, uh, you know, formidable uh, entrances and flights of stairs and columns. But, but you know, they, people have written about how there may be shapers uh, in a way we don't realize that they tell us who we were and who we are and who we should be and we trust them don't we particularly when they are government-owned places they're authoritative and uh, they're influential our activist barbie likes to call them patriarchal palaces of painting uh, they are patriarchal palaces of, of depicting male power and privilege and they are places that are full of bias, discrimination, exclusion and representation. So the exclusion of women artists, um, you know, that the representation of women often is, is very uh, problematic, but uh, they do have great potential to be a wonderful place to educate for social justice and, and for change. And so I do activist work, um, which sort of causes a visual disruption and I hope that the disruption, it, it sort of interrupts people from just walking past and, and seeing things without ever thinking. So these places are sort of almost like conditioning us. They're socially conditioned us just to accept things. And as, um, as an educator and an academic, uh, the, the quotation at the bottom, this is in a huge, great big tome that we, we all refer to. It's in like its 10th edition. But, uh, you know, in the, in the last one, I, I read this and I thought, Oh, that really speaks to me, this idea of uh, Denzel and Lincoln that say, getting mad is no longer enough. We must learn how to act. So I've learned how to act. I'm just trying to move my slide on. Oh, here we are. And a little bit about our activist Barbie now. So why Barbie? Well, um, I'm really fascinated by this, uh, you know, the fact we have a bit of a love-hate relationship with her, don't we? As, as a feminist, I, I absolutely should not like Barbie, but many of us will have uh, this idea of, uh, you know, she's a, 
a site of tension, isn't she? Um, and as has been said, this idea of she's both loved and, and she troubles us at the same time. And this is what happens in art galleries with, with many paintings. We, we, we possibly will love some particular works of art, but they trouble us. And maybe we've not always thought why. I know it was as an adult, I could only start to realize why I was troubled by some artworks. And uh, I take art activist Barbie into museums as um, an aesthetic provocation. And I've sort of recreated it. I've sort of created this character over time that she's like a fearless feminist activist and uh, she holds a mirror up just to point out what you might not be seeing. She does actually have a little miniature mirror herself. <laughs> and so she challenges what's going on with her little, uh, li little miniature placards that are made out of lollipop sticks. So I'm forever in Costa and places like that, just having eaten a few more lollipop sticks. And, and it's playful. It's playful public pedagogic practice as well. And I think maybe that's been part of its success that, that a lot of it is, is playful as well. And I like the idea of subverting something, you know, the idea of Barbie who you know, is a problematic representation of a woman. Um, I like to subvert that really. Um, and it's been documented on Twitter and been successful in a short space of time. And here is what the Twitter account looks like if you've, if you've never seen it. So the, the pin tweet, which I did on the very first time I, I did a tweet, I didn't even I didn't have a Twitter account before I did that. Um, there she is, uh, and, and that's sad, you know, tens and tens of thousands of people have, have looked at that. <laughs> now you'll be pleased to know this is the only slide that hasn't got a, an image or a photograph on, but just briefly, just a little, a little sort of to think about what the idea of a, a scholar um, act, activism might be and the activist scholar, the person. And I suppose it's this desire to make a difference, isn't it? And, and it's linked to social justice. And can it help people to, um, as Lowry says, you know, promote a critical and a sociological understanding of social issues so that people develop a sociological eye and maybe civic minded behavior. And another advocate of uh, being a, an activist scholar, he says, life's too short, push the boundaries, pick up a fuss. <laughs> and that's what she does in her own inimitable way. And I'm really inspired uh, by Maxine Green, who was a, a philosopher, uh, an American woman. She died in 2014 in the 90s, but she was an advocate for the arts all the time. And, and she talked about, um, you know, this idea of, of, of taking steps to repair what's felt to be missing or, or known to be wrong. This particular work here is in the Guildhall Art Gallery in London, owned by the City of London. Um, so actually I was just pointing out that I was repairing something that was wrong, which was the label. The label says it's just by um, Mark Boyle, but actually he co-created it with his wife and the, uh, the curatorial label mentions nothing about that because when they bought it, it was bought as his work, but she co-created it. So what kind of things do we see in art galleries? This is, uh, this is Tate's, Tate Britain in London. If you look at the bottom of your screen, you'll just see a very small figure there, just leaning against the marble um, floor. And so here on the left, we've got uh, the woman who's um, trapped, actually, confined. And so we, we, a lot of works where women are like in a gilded cage, they're enclosed, they're trapped, they can't get out. Sometimes they're sort of, you know, they're inside looking out at a window to a place they can't go. We've then got the woman dressed as, as the nun, so there's this idea of the, of the pure woman as well. The next very large um, one, I mean, they're in gorgeous frames, these, so we love them. Just gorgeous, aren't they? Actually, this, is, um, this is about the beggar maid, so this is the, the prince or the knight falling in love with the beggar maid at the gate. So this idea of even if you're, you know, you're poor and barefoot, in your rags, you're still so absolutely beautiful. So you, the, the charm of the poor woman, the beggar woman. Or oh, then we've got Psyche on the far right, the, the seductress, that, the way that that um, painting has been. And that's just one wall in Tate Britain. And so I, I tweeted at the time, that this is a, a male fantasy wall. <laughs> the fantasy of the beautiful maid and the pure woman and the available woman or the trapped woman. You'd be pleased to know when I, I went into the Tate just before Christmas and that, whether they'd seen my tweet, but those works have now been dispersed and they're not all on one wall. And so what does our activist Barbie do? She often, um, you know, she, she might uh, stage a, a visual echo of, of work. 
I want you to have a look at this little coat because this coat was made by my <coughs> Emma mother. On Twitter, I refer to her as Beloved Mutu. She made that coat for me, um, well, for my doll in the 1970s. And when I first started this work, I'd got Barbie in the pink ball gown and thought, I'm going to have to get something different for her to wear. I can't just keep photographing the pink ball gown. And then I, I remembered that I'd got packed away in tissue in a box, you know, this uh, an absolutely gorgeous wardrobe that my mum made for me. Um, so it's very 70s. Look at this lurid thread in the coat. So I, I, got, I got them all out and I thought, oh, I've got a whole vintage wardrobe to, to use here. And so Beloved Butter is absolutely thrilled that I was using this work and it was um, her clothing. And then my, uh, my big sister, who's actually a really famous <laughs> science, science professor advising governments and the World Health Organization. Uh, you know, Mutti said, oh, I, 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 my eyesight's so poor, I can't make you anything new to help with the work. And, and so my big sister said, I, I'll make you some things. So when I don't have time, my sister creates many, many things for me. And so we call, we refer to that as the Atelier, Atelier AAB. And here we are in the, in the National Gallery in front of uh, the Roque by Venus. So, so there's absolutely no problem getting into a gallery if, you, if you're in a painting without any clothes on. Um, <clears throat> And uh, I had I had uh, had had Mutti with me at the point at this time. This was um, Nicola from Berlin that we got talking to, and, and she said to me, she said most academics are really boring. She said <laughs> this is the most interesting work I've seen for a long time. And she was writing a novel uh, about two people that met uh, standing in front of the Rope de Venus. And after I'd done you know what I was doing there, she said I'm going to write this into the novel. Anyway, there's a bit of a commotion happened here. This is a behind the scenes story. So there was like a crowd of people all that came around. And then the, the uh, security attendant came over and she said, right, that's enough now. So I said, oh, and so she said, that's enough. You're just taking the mickey. This gallery is for everybody. So I sort of tried to explain what I was doing. Anyway, she, it's unfortunate she was a she. She said, she said, oh, she said, I don't agree with all that equality stuff. Stop what you're doing. So I, I go over to, M to Mutti, who's there with the coats and the bags and the loy pop sticks and everything. I said, Mum, we've got to go. And she said, but why? I was really enjoying watching that. Can't you leave it a bit longer? I said, no, Mum, we've got to go. And she said, why? And I, I managed to get her up to her, up, up onto her feet, you know, because she's like 91 at this point and Nicola from Berlin is helping as well. And uh, <laughs> it's quite hard of hearing. So she wore a hearing aid. And I don't know if you know, people with hearing aids, they, they whisper in a very loud voice, don't they? So I said, we've got to go, Mum. She said, but why? So I explained what the attendant had said to me. So, uh, so Mutti says in this very loud voice, well, the problem there is she's not very bright, is she? She's like, oh, Mum, 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 quick, quick, quick. And she couldn't walk fast. I thought, we're going to get banned for life. Here we are, look. Um, you'll often find paintings where the woman has nothing on, but the men are fully clothed. Uh, they've not just got shirts and ties. We've got hats on here as well. Very famous painting by Manet. So I recreated this scene and just, just to sort of point out what you're looking at. And then I thought, actually, let's just see what it's like if you were, we were to turn the tables, really, and the, uh, the gents can be un undressed. So we've got Ken on the left and then Action Man. They, um, they do support the campaign and more about them later. So there's uh, our activist Barbish in her ball gown. I do quite a bit of work about... Um, the muse as well. So we'll, we'll often find the, the woman as a muse and often the muse was used and abused very often by the male artist. So this uh, this is one of these sort of paintings that, that we absolutely love, that we're very familiar with, uh, Ophelia by Millet. <clears throat> uh, here's our activist Barbie. This is during lockdown when I couldn't go into a gallery. So this, <laughs> my, my daughter's got a pond in the garden with all, and I said, oh, I could just do Ophelia in there. Um, but these, these paintings, you know, that they, they are paintings of something like this. It's of female suicide. Uh, suggests that there's like this romantic beauty in drowning. It, so it's deeply problematic. And that if we look at the lives of these women who were the muse, how they, they were used and how they were abused. So um, Lizzie Siddle, the model for that piece of work. She had to pose in a bath for months, only lit by candles, and she became really ill, unsurprisingly, and Millet refused to pay the doctor's bill. <clears throat> she said, my life is so miserable, I wish for no more of it. 
Oh no, what's, what's this about painting women in, in, in the bath and in the water? Anyway, here we are. Here's our activist Barbie at that exhibition. Um, she's saying, I know the water's getting cold, but can you keep sitting there for a few more hours? Said Bonnar to his muse. Well, we see women in art um, very often passive, um, subdued, engaged in quiet activity. So a typical one here on the left of a woman sewing. And look at the title of the painting. It's even called Quiet Occupation. So you'll find all too often women, you know, there's one in Manchester of a woman sewing, and that's called Sweet Industry. So again, it's this gilded cage idea, isn't it? You know, they, they are decorative objects. They're confined, they're enclosed, and they're trapped. And I, I tweeted during lockdown that women have, have actually been enclosed and trapped and locked down for a long time. This is in the Hunterian Gallery in, in Glasgow. Now, this is a, a gallery that's really taking steps to do something about some of the, the, the problematic issues in galleries. And they've got a rehang that's going to open um, shortly in about a month's time. So I, I urge you to go and see there. They're, they're even going to include this photograph in their digital label as well. So here's our artist, Barbara, saying, you know, as, as if you weren't quite sure about you, you your place in society, ladies, and what you ought to be doing. You know, look, look to Mary, even the Virgin is sewing. So here we've got the trapped woman again, the pure woman, enclosed. Um, and so, you know, what we're saying there, <clears throat> you know, admire the flowers, read your book. Um, and if you, you know, we can combine all of this with piety, so much the better. And often this, uh, the, the purity of, of, of of woman, this desired purity. Often, it, you know, the, the painting next to it can be the complete opposite. So we can have this angel or a harlot um, kind of thing going on. And in the Ashmolean, they even have one painting where there's a man in the middle and he's got two women either side. And, they, uh, and one represents vice and the other represents virtue. Um, a lot of women um, in scenes of tranquility you know, the, here we've got Psyche, <clears throat> actually not have them uh, completely silent, but how about sleeping? Not going to cause any bother there. <laughs> <Got some. laughs> this is in the Hunterian as well. This is um, a, a woman drinking the ashes of a dead husband. So there's, you know, so many women grieving in art galleries, weeping and wailing over men. You know, waiting for them to rescue them and, and grieving. And uh, anyway, I said, Look, I didn't even know it was a thing. Did you drink in the ashes of a man? I said, Stop, love, don't do it. And very often, um, all these um, <clears throat> paintings of women, <coughs> excuse me, they're also, it's all the, the, the pretext um, and the excuse to paint all of these is a supposed interest in in like scenes from antiquity and mythology and, and you know, and often there's this really scholarly reference to classical history. Um, and, and the labels in the galleries will talk about the fine brushwork and et cetera, but you know, I'm seeing something else here. In fact, when I tweeted this, a man got in touch and said, oh no, I don't think you understand it's a woman, you know, it's such a sensitive depiction of a woman who is grieving. Yes, it is but uh, I don't know why she had to be losing her clothes and have her transparent drapes on at the same time. How about this one? <laughs> a topless woman with some tigers and lions. Anyway, I thought to myself, do you know, I'm sure we've got a little toy tiger from the World Wildlife Fund somewhere. So I sometimes imagine a conversation between the patron and the artist. And Venus, oh gosh, you think she'd be clean by now. She's been bathing for centuries, centuries. Uh, the one on the right is in the National Gallery. The one on the left, it, you know, it's not just National Galleries. It's a small gallery. This is a small gallery in Whitby on, on the Yorkshire coast. Um, you've got crouching Venus there. And here's probably the most famous Venus of all, isn't it? Botticelli's uh, The Birth of Venus, a painting that we, many of us will be familiar with. And, and, <clears throat> and th you know, I've often thought it's absolutely lovely. And I thought, well, it is, but the poor woman, she's been trying to pull her hair over, <clears throat> like, you know, a few centuries now. And really what she needs is, is, a, is a great hat and a, and a fabulous frock, isn't she? <clears throat> so here we are. Here she is. She's got a, a fabulous hat and a, and a great frock. We'll see Action Man, though. More of him later. 
And here's a, a close up of that. <laughs> See, I amuse myself if I do. If no, yes. And here we've got uh, Action Man uh, just stuff the photo shoot. You see, even he wishes to cover up. My daughter referred to this as a, a modesty clam. <laughs> And when we see men in art, what do men look like? Well, uh, actually, it's a little bit different. M men have got the clothes on. They're often showing off. Look what I've got. Here we've got the ambassadors uh, in London, Holborn's uh, very famous painting. Um, so I, I said to my big sister, if I eat all of these hobdobs, <laughs> can you make me, could you make a frog out of the packet? And she did. It's just so tedious, all this patriarchal hobnobbing, isn't it? Oh, the male saviour. Oh, for goodness sake, there's all these men saving women everywhere. So on the left in the National Gallery, uh, this is Prince George saving the princess. But on the right, here, look, here we've got the, uh, he's fighting, a, the man is fighting a serpent, he's covered in armour. And hey, guess what? The woman's got no clothes on. So just a, a little note to everybody, if you're desperate to get rescued, take clothes off. Um, I did another painting as well, where actually it's, it's a, a different hero, a different woman, and the woman's um, is a full frontal nude. <clears throat> and that painting, just to go back to it, <laughs> when I was there, the um, everything was fine. I was taking a few photographs in it, it's exhibition, and, and it was all fine with the gallery. They didn't mind, but the minute I took Barbie's clothes off, that was a problem, and the attendant came rushing over and said, "Oh, we don't allow that kind of thing in here." And I thought, well, it, it's okay in the painting then. <clears> oh, <throat> the, the men, you know, they're, they're always heroic as well and so brave. Here, if you look at our, our hero there, uh, all the animals are all absolutely cowering in, in fear. But of course, our hero is not. So let's uh, have a little look at Action Man and Ken. And uh, I've got another Ken, actually. So he had to become Ken's cousin, Ken. So they're given a bit of reading to do. Um, they, uh, they provide support. This is outside the National Gallery. Action Man's signature dish is, is a fried egg sandwich. I'm afraid that's all he can do um, because he just, has, uh, he just has one pan with two fried eggs. The, the pan was made out of an earring. And um, here they are on the left, you know, they can't even know five women artists when we started. I thought I'd dress them up in bonnets just to see what it's like to wear the visual signifiers of, of a patriarchal society. It's all very sort of very handmaid's tale, isn't it? This idea of the white bonnet. The painting on, on the on the left here is of women in Brittany. And uh, there are the painting's got many women, it's got like 20 of them all wearing these white bonnets, and they're being overlooked by the pardoners. So this is uh, two um, males who will pardon all of these women of their sins. Part of this Bobby, she's got uh, an information desk. She's, you know, sometimes there's some breaking news, it's past a bedtime, so you might catch her in a, in a dressing gown and a rollers. I'm just going to talk about something a, a little bit more serious now, which is something else that we, we find a great deal in our art galleries, and maybe you don't even realize this is what we're walking past. And, and this is artworks that um, depict violence against women and women being uh, threatened and harassed and uh, raped. And here we are in the National Gallery. The, the two paintings on the right are both of a biblical scene, Susanna and the Elders. So they, they show women being like, you know, um, well, the story of Susanna is that unless she agreed to sleep with these two elders, um, in the church, they would accuse her of adultery. The one on the left is, is, is um, the judgment of Paris, and they've got lots of examples of this on the walls in the National Gallery. So um, Paris is, is judging three women and deciding who he thinks is the most beautiful. This was all just a bit too much for uh, our activist Barbie, the team, so they, they had to get the yoga mats out and do a bit of yoga when we were there. <clears throat> This is in this is Susanna and the Elders again. This is in Tate Britain. And it, and it's all, you know, these um paintings are of women being threatened. It's all they're all in these beautiful frames and it's all normalized in art. This is the probably the worst example I've seen. This is in, in Lisbon. So here we've got the woman with you know everything on view, as if there's something erotic about a woman being tortured. This is a woman being tortured by monks. 
in, in the Inquisition. Here we've got Susanna again. Uh, this time, Susanna is almost like um, she's at fault, isn't it? She, she's there uh, looking back alluringly <clears throat> as if she's enticing these elders. I'm just going to show you a few um, reactions from visitors now. Here we are, look, because often uh, our artifice Barbie, she's <laughs> more popular than the paintings. Everybody wants to take photographs of her. So, uh, and, I mean, look at the painting on the left. Why have one nude woman uh, bathing when you could have 11, thought Suzanne. And everybody always bends down to read what the little placards say as well. I always, afterwards, I always ask if I, I can have permission to take the picture, by the way. <clears throat> I do a little bit of work about statuary as well, because um, there's lots of statues in our, our museums, museums and art galleries. Here, and the, it, you'll find, you know, that great men, they're always on these plinths, aren't they, to elevate them even more above us. And as in this statue of Gladstone, Prime Minister Gladstone here, often there is a cast of women that support these great men. And, and I don't know why, but they can't seem to keep their drapes on. And busts of great men of wherever we are. <clears throat> Sometimes it just gets a little bit too much and you've got to get your candy stripe pillowcase out. <laughs> don't tell anyone. I don't know who did that. And yet, if, then if we look at busts of women, look at this one. This is in the Guildhall Art Gallery. Um, <clears throat> and opposite, there was a, a sculpture of like a, a young girl who's, um, she, she's got some clothes on, but she, she's like a young prepubescent girl barefoot. So there are two different kinds of, uh, of female there served up for men. I came back home and I told Mutti and, and I was absolutely, you know, really upset and mad and everything about this and how, you know, and Mutti said, well, it was ever thus, she said. And then somebody asked me, what did I think about this? So I looked at this, this is, um, a war monument. Well, and so the woman, even though she looks like she's playing, playing darts, doesn't she? But she's actually inscribing the names of, of the war dead on this memorial. So why she's losing her drapes while she's doing that. So it was another bit of a, a nipple gate situation there. <clears throat> I mean, you'd never play darts, would you, with your clothes falling off? It's just not safe. Some of you might have uh, remember a bit of hoo-ha about the Mary Wollenstone craft statue that was created and, and put in place in London <clears throat> a couple of years ago. Um, so I did a few tweets about that as well. Mutti said, um, you know, if nobody would ever um, <clears throat> do a new statue of Margaret Thatcher, would they? So, so why, why, why have a nude woman? It just seemed a bit disappointing um, that, that to actually commemorate a, a real woman, not an allegorical woman or a fantasy woman or anything, <clears throat> but um, she had no clothes on. And did you know there are, more there are more statues of animals in London, animals, than there are named women? The named women generally are, are Queen Victoria, by the way. Here we are, this is Leeds. <clears throat> Don't know if you've uh, ever come out the station at Leeds, but there are four great, great men of Leeds. Um, they're there with their, you know, things that have, have, have marvellous things for Leeds and the world and in terms of discovery and inventions and, and everything. So they're along all along one wall. And then um, in like this great big semicircle, there are eight, eight women wearing nothing but a, but a little wisp um, supporting them. This is also in Leeds. <clears throat> Again, this caused a tizzy once I took the clothes off our activist Barbie. The attendant came running over and said, oh, excuse me, what are you doing? So I explained, she said, oh, I think I'll have to go and speak to the manager about that. <clears throat> anyway, while she'd gone, I quickly took a few photos. This is also in Leeds because <clears throat> the gender uh, and, and some of the, the issues and, and, and problems, it all intersects with um, race and also with class. So the construct of beauty is always white in galleries as well. Now, <clears throat> thought you might be interested in what's been the most popular um, tweet and the tweet that's done, um, had, had the most uh, engagement with it. And it's this one here. So this is in the Ashmolean Museum in Oxford, uh, 
Pre-Raphaelite painting. And I, I said, well, I just think it's a bit like a Pre-Raphaelite wet t-shirt competition in here. Well, over 50,000 people have looked at that. Uh, it's gone to like over, you know, nearly 100,000 Twitter accounts and, and 51 people have actually had a proper look at it and engaged with it as well. And, and I was very sort of inspired by what Mary Beard, had, she referred to this kind of work as like, is it sort of soft porn for the elite? And the most successful month, um, in one month, if you look on the right hand side, 1.86 million when i first saw that i thought wonder what the m stands for then it dawned on me it was like million well to think that this work has gone to 1.86 million people is is absolutely um you know flabbergasted um <clears throat> the top mention had been from uh valdemar yanajak who's a sunday times art critic and so just a little bit about about the impact here you know the twitter account have been um the work's been featured in lots of newspaper and online. I've had an exhibition of photographs and lots of keynote invitations. But what is really important is to at the bottom about galleries changing their practices. And even the National Portrait Gallery have appointed somebody a couple of years ago, and her sole job is to um, it's about missing narratives of women because they were missing in the National Portrait Gallery. And just before. Christmas, uh, art activist Barbie, I went with her, um, was invited to brief MPs and, and peers in Westminster. So there she was. Um, and this is a little bit of press. <clears throat> I'd like to draw attention to, to this group, Art for All by All. So I, I work with this group and, and support them. So a small group of, of very clever women and, and they are campaigning to get more equality and, and diversity of artists on our gallery walls. And uh, with them, we are, we're campaigning and asking the government to introduce a requirement for galleries to, that, <clears throat> that publicly funded galleries address inequality in their collections. So please make a note of their, their website and their Twitter account and their Instagram account as well. And so good activism, just to, uh, you know, we're nearly getting towards the end now, just to have a little think about what good activism might mean. And the great John Lewis, who was a, a congressman in America, he was sort of a legend with regard to the civil rights movement. He's often used this phrase about uh, good trouble, getting in good trouble, and, and, and he talks about it, it, necessary trouble as well. And when you see something that is not right, not just not fair, even obligation to say something, to do something. Our children and their children will ask us, what did you do? What did you say? And then Bell Hooks, the great Bell Hooks, she talks about not, not using just our intellect, but also our imaginations um, to think about a, a way of being and to work for change. So here's um, team AAB outside the National Gallery. So the, uh, on the right, pointing out, welcome to the Patriarchal Palace of Painting. And then the, we, we, often there's a public information service. She's just pointing out there are 2,300 works by men and 21 by women in there. You're welcome. So, um, this, this is a photograph by Tim Walker, who often has like glorious different representations of gender in its many forms. And in this exhibition, there was this uh, little quotation here from C.S. Lewis. You can't go back and change the beginning, but you can start where you are and change the ending. And I suppose that's what I'm, I'm trying to do with this work. So thank you, everyone. Um, it's been a pleasure to talk about good activism, art activism and uh, creative disruption and the power of the arts um, to activate our, our consciousness. And, and this work as a practice of challenge, but also possibility and hope. Um, and uh, making good trouble. I'm just going to show you a little behind the scenes photograph just to finish now, just to make you smile. So here we are, <laughs> you know, here are the men going into battle, heroic, brave, as always. It's not always easy doing these photographs. Sometimes they need a hand. <laughs> so 
you are behind the scenes. So thank you very much, everybody. I'm going to stop sharing these slides now. There. Oh, thank you so much, Sarah. Big round of applause. Um, it, that was amazing, as always. And I'm sure now everybody's going to, next time everybody's in um, an art gallery, they're going to think about this and they're never going to be able to enjoy pre-Raphaelite paintings ever again, which is oh. what has happened to me <laughs> since meeting Sarah. Um, we've got a few questions and comments in the chat, so I'm just going to whiz through and see what we have. So Caroline um, asks, I don't know if you can answer this, Sarah, but it's just sort of a really interesting thought. Is there any research into art commissioned by women through history? in those rare situations when they did have that autonomy and wealth, for example, like wealthy widows? Mm, yeah, what, what a good question. Mm. Um, I couldn't answer that off the top of my head. Mm. Uh, maybe that some other people might know about that and be able to put that, that in the chat. Yeah. Uh, I mean, some galleries, when they're trying to make women more visible in their collections, they are trying to highlight where work has been commissioned by a female patron um, mm. so that, you know, there, there is still a the visibility of the patron if, if it's been a woman as well. Mm. Uh, Maru um, points out that fairy tales, is, it's a similar issue in fairy tales, the story sort of based on men's desires of how girls and women should be. Lucinda's particularly disappointed that it was a, a female, a woman artist that did the sculpture of uh, Mary Wallace Stonecraft. Um, Maggie Hambling. Mm. So yeah. Then just says, what was Maggie H on? Good question. And thanks, Anita, for posting the details of the Art for All by All campaign. And Eleanor, oh, Eleanor's now had to rethink her favourite painting, Klimt's the Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I knew this would happen. I knew this would happen. <laughs> really sorry, everything, Sarah. Yeah, I only noticed there. Yeah, the woman, the woman is in a submissive stance on her knees. Mm -hmm. And then lots of thank yous. You have to read. Are you looking at this, Sarah? There's lots of lovely. No, comments. no, I'm not looking at them. No, no, I can't. Okay, no. we'll have to save them, and then you can have a look at them later. But lots of them. Um, lots of thank yous. I'm hoping that my uh, my my big brother was tuning in. And he used to oh. ring. He used to ring Mutty up and say, "What's she doing with those Barbie dolls?" <laughs> and, and, and it's when I just bought the glasses. He said, "Is it something to do with Thunderbirds?" <laughs> so, I'm hoping that my big brother now understands a little bit more about what I'm doing. And uh, and Mutty would say to me, if she was in a gallery, she would say, "Put her glasses on." And I'd say, "Oh, I am doing one." She said, "Put her glasses on." She said, "She needs to look serious." And this is serious work. Oh, brilliant. And who made the hat with the seagull on? Venus's hat. Uh, yes, the, my big sister. Yeah. Oh, was it? Atelier AOB. Yes. yes. <laughs> she was very in tune. I sort of got this bit of an Agatha Christie aesthetic with the, you know, with the Met ball thrown in. It's a, a few little influences. We've got a certain kind of uh, look. A uh, good question from Giles here. Um, do you see any influence of camp in how art activist Barbie can trouble mm -hmm. these Yeah, works? that would be really interesting to look more mm -hmm. into that and to think about that more. Yeah, thank you for that. Mm. Something to think about and maybe write about too. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've got lots of followers here. Ah. Karen asks, why Barbie of the many dolls available? Yeah, why not Cindy? <laughs> well, do you know, I actually had Tressie, second down Tressie as well. She'd, she'd lost a ponytail by the time I got her. Um, <clears throat> I suppose because Barbie is the most famous doll in, in the Western world, isn't she? And she is a cultural icon. Not saying that Cindy and Tressie aren't, or, or Bratz dolls or whatever, but I just thought... She is so immediately recognisable. And also she is associated with, you know, it, it, it's problematic, isn't it? You know, uh, the kind of woman that she represents, this impossible figure. Um, and the original Barbies that are, are white and, and with blonde hair. So I quite like the idea of taking something that where there is all this conflict 
and 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 as I said before, you know, she's a troubling presence and subverting that. The artist Jenny Holzer, she talks about using the dominant culture to change it. So I almost uh, that's what I'm doing. So and Bob is just instantly recognizable whenever she's in a gallery. Um, People can like spot her at the far end, you know. I suppose it, I think people notice something out of place, don't they? What? Well, why is there a little doll on the floor, or or something like that? Mm. So it's a way of of grabbing attention as well. And that leads very nicely into Mel's question. Um, she'd like to hear, and I'd like to hear as well, a bit more about how visitors to the galleries um, that you and Barbie visit. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's generally always, always really positive. Um, because people stop and then they, they like do a double take um, and then they start getting the phones out and, and then they want to, they, you know, they're bending down and reading the placards and, and then they're looking around to see, well, you know, where's it from? I'm generally sort of just somewhere in the vicinity. And so absolutely wonderful conversations start between me and people, but between complete strangers. Um, I was at the Anthony Gormley exhibition at the Royal Academy who've never had a female artist in the main rooms. They're always in the little side rooms, everybody. And, um, and two women who didn't know each other started to talk all, all about the issues and uh, you know the lack of women artists in art galleries and museums. These two ladies didn't even know each other. So conversations start. The conversations start in like family groups, you know, often say, particularly in London, it, it'd be a family group that goes to look around the art gallery or, or the museum. So the whole family will start to debate and talk about it. And then, you know, <clears throat> the very first time I did it, the very first time I, I did this work with Bob is was in my local art gallery, Huddersfield Art Gallery. So I don't know if anyone from Huddersfield is with us this evening, but they've been very supportive of my, of my, my work in art gallery, their art gallery. And, um, and so, you know, I've got in touch and said, I think I want to bring some students and some Barbie dolls. Can we take some photographs? Would that be all right? And they said, oh, yes, yes, that's fine. So we did this work. <clears throat> I did it with my students. And I noticed that the gallery visitors were absolutely, they, they wanted to see what we were doing and what Barbie had to say as much as look at the artworks in the gallery. And I got in conversation with a woman who said to me, I'm, I'm seeing what you're doing. And I'm reading these messages and it's it's making me realise how women are judged so much by what's on the outside and not on the inside. And so and that was the very first time. And I thought, oh, it really does engage people. I have had, I did have a complaint once, if you're interested in a complaint. This was <laughs> Cindy Sherman, um, because I do celebrate women artists as well. I was in the Cindy Sherman exhibition in the National Portrait Gallery about three years ago. And um, um, yeah, a man complained. <laughs> he, did. he said he didn't want to see that. <laughs> so uh, the attendant came over and said, oh, I'm really sorry, but we've had a complaint. I said, oh, it's okay, I'm going now. He said, no, no, he's insisting that we brought you to the manager. <laughs> and she came over there apologetic as well. She was a woman um, and said, I'm really sorry. I said, look, you know, <laughs> I'm going, it's, it's fine. I don't wish to cause any problem at all. So, hmm. I, I, love hearing this. Stories. Yeah, I love hearing those stories. We could go on. Yeah. <laughs> let's just see what else we let's see what else we've got in the questions because we might be able to come back to that if you want. Um Linda is interested in Barbie's lack of pubes. She does have boobs, but no oh. pubes. Um, Linda, but you'll find you'll find in uh, white statuary uh, they don't have any pubic hair either. So that this male fantasy, women don't have hair. You know, they're not real bodies. Um, <clears throat> isn't there a story about Ruskin, the art, you know, the Victorian art critic? Yeah, he was absolutely horrified by his wife, um, and the marriage was never consummated. It did not actually. It was disgusted by the reality of a, of, of a woman's body. Uh, question from Jane. If we challenge a gallery curator about a work depicting a female nude and they just say it's a beautiful work of art, what might you say next? Is it realistic to expect them to take it down or get them to add something to the painting's description? What would you expect? What would be an ideal outcome? Hmm. I'm, I'm not asking galleries to take these works down. 
I mean, I don't like the works of, of young girls with nothing on. I think that is a problem. If we saw, if, if there were a photograph, we would say that was child porn uh, and we would say it was catering for um, <clears throat> you know, pedophilia. But many of these paintings, we, we, do, we do love them, don't we? And they are beautiful, but we, I, I, I just want galleries to actually start to own up and, 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 and tell people what, what's going on and why, why these works were commissioned and who commissioned them and to open up discussions about the male gaze. Birmingham Art Gallery has actually done that quite effectively. They, they actually have got a whole uh, lot of information telling people about gaze and seeing things in different ways. So um, ideally there is something that's revisionist and maybe about, it's often the curatorial labels are problems as well. You know, they will introduce, <clears throat> if it's a woman artist, the little label on the wall next to the painting will all be about who she was married to and who her father was. So often the, the, the female artist has to be recognised in, in her relation and the relationality to men. And yet, if you look at a gallery label that's um, introducing a, a, a male artist, you know, very rarely will say who, which woman he was married to and who his mother was. So. I think there's work to be done in galleries. It, or, or, for example, I think in the National Portrait Gallery, the portrait of Jane Austen, the label says she never married. Well, there have been many male artists who didn't marry, but it won't say on the label, he never married. Um, so women are subjected to uh, all of this, <clears throat> even in, in the label. So the labelling could be better. Um, now... The Hunterian Gallery, as I've mentioned before in Glasgow, they're introducing these digital labels so that there will be more, more than just one little bit of information. So uh, they're going to include some art activist Barbie <laughs> photographs in their digital labels, which is wonderful, isn't it? So again, well, that's great. I didn't know that. That's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. They've just been in touch um, uh, last week Brilliant. to uh, ask permission for that. Yeah. Excellent. Um, Lucinda used art activist Barbie in one of her seminars with second year undergrads last week and thinks they were genuinely surprised after looking at activism in feminist art from the 70s that this the problem is just ongoing isn't it? Yes well as I started at the beginning you know gender inequality and the problems associated with it are ongoing and if anything yeah. sometimes I think things are getting worse you know mm -hmm. online um, such toxic masculinity the uh, you know, misogyny, um, absolutely terrible things. Yeah. And, and I, I'm an educator, so I feel it's really important. You know, and I work in a department at a university at Huddersfield. We have a, you know, my, my school of education and professional development. We are very committed to social justice um, in our work as educators. You know, that, that inspires me. Um, I really think we, we have important work to do in this field. Um, Jane says that she started conversations with those around her um, next to a female statue and it felt really positive and she'd encourage other people to do that. So perhaps we can all yeah, go away and have a go at that. Well, it takes some nerve, so well it, done. Yeah, I think, I think it's such a I great think I've developed my courage. Yeah. I mean, to start with, this is another story, you know, I, I'd, I'd be there in a gallery and I'd be like, red cart and hot sweat and think, I don't do this. And I'd like walk around four times and then I'd go and have a cup of tea and think, I can't do it. And I think, well, no, go on, do it, do it. So then I'd do it. And then the more, I suppose, um, somebody talks about working with courageous energy. So I worked quite sort of swiftly <laughs> with some um, courageous energy. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, Linda's asking what the, the man was complaining about, the man that complained in the Cindy Sherman exhibition. Well, I didn't actually engage a conversation with him myself because he didn't want to talk to me, he just wanted to complain. I've <laughs> 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 I mean, I mean, moved, moved out off the premises. So anyway, <laughs> just put all this money to go into that exhibition as well. It only just started. And, uh, and I was with my, uh, my, my colleague and friend, Judith. And so I said, we're going to have to get one. So we went outside. I said, never mind. <clears throat> I know, I'll put her on the railings outside. You can still have something to say on the railings. And they sing, you know, two men in black with walkie talkies come up. I mean, I've had a lot of dealings with people in black with walkie talkies. <laughs> <laughs> Attendants don't want to deal with themselves. They're always calling security. Anyway, 
the men in black uh, came <coughs> with the walkie-talkies, approached me, and uh, our activist Barbie, she's simply perched on the railings on Charing Cross Road, and, and you know, if you at Charing Cross Road, there's an awful lot going on on that road, <laughs> an awful lot, and a lot of people. So while they were particularly perturbed by a, a small doll with a lollipop stick, a miniature placard on the railings, I don't know, uh, anyway, they were. I explained the work and they said, oh, well, you're not going to leave it there, are you? You're not going to leave the doll there. I said, no, I'm not. I said, that is a vintage outfit she's wearing. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny, isn't it? It's so funny people's reactions. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> in the National Gallery, I've had so, so many different reactions in there. Mm. Um, one time a man said, oh, I'm going to have to ask you to stop doing that. He said, but it was so nice. He said, what I'm going to do is, I said, I'm just going to walk all the way around the other end of this room and into the other room, um, and then I'll come back. He said, and that'll give you a few minutes. So that was really supportive and, uh, and yeah. it was great. Um, other times, um, like, like the one that said, I don't agree with all that equality stuff. And I said, this is somebody working in the gallery. Well, I think they need to do some staff training there, don't they? <laughs> Uh, we've got a couple of other suggestions here. Um, Anita says that galleries should consider putting paintings, these sorts of paintings, inside rooms rather than thoroughfares. So that might be one way of, of tackling some of these problematic images. And you know, oh, Leah, it's it's violence going... against women. You know, that, that, yeah. why, why are we looking at those? Yeah. It just normalises it, doesn't it? Uh -huh. Sorry, what were you going to say, Victoria? Just the final comment was from Leah that she's going to Paris soon and is and is going to think very differently going around the galleries there. So, so you have you have certainly got us thinking, Sarah. So I would just really like to thank you again. It's a wonderful talk and such um such a playful and but inspiring um topic. And I just loved, really loved it. Um so thank you. And hopefully we'll do a follow-up one of these days. Oh, yes. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. And we'll try and it's save this fun. chat for you to read because you've got such good feedback here. So have a good um, International Women's Day evening, everybody. Yes. And do. hopefully see you again. Yes. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.